Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, I'm going to try to not incriminate myself. Plead the Fifth is an 11% Russian Imperial Stout from Dark Horse Brewery in Marshall, Michigan. Plead the Fifth has been a staple of Dark Horse's lineup for years. If you're watching this review, you've probably already had this year's version, or you've had it previously and you're checking in to see how this one turned out. So let's get down to it, but first I'd like to thank my executive producers Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Chad Shirk, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com where you can get early access to these videos, a few other special perks that are available only to patrons, including a giveaway that I'm doing right now. So check out my Patreon for all the information about that. So we're gonna take a look at the can here. This is Plead the Fifth. We're gonna take a look at the front. It is a red label. It has a fist and in the fist is a number five on the thumb and in the palm, like the, the whatever that muscle is right there. And it's holding a scale on one side is a hop cone. On the other side is some, some malted or some wheat. Uh, not malted wheat, but it's, it's wheat at this point. And it says, plead the fifth Russian Imperial Stout. If we turn it to the side here, it has a Dark Horse Brewing Company logo in Marshall, Michigan. If we turn it even more, it says, plead the fifth. The style is a Russian Imperial Stout, pitch black in color with a faint tan head that immediately identifies this beer as big. Aromas of dark fruit, chocolate, caramel, and roast also make it even bigger. Roasted coffee aroma and fruity chocolate notes are just the beginning of the stout's complex flavor. If this is wrong, we don't want to be right. It's alcohol by volume is 11%. It's 41 IBUs. It says pairs well with spicy food, pungent cheese, and justice for all. This looks like it was canned on June 29th. This just hit shelves near me uh, within the last couple weeks. So I'm going to grab this large snifter style glass. We're going to go ahead and crack it and put a nose on it. And let's see what we get here. Has big aroma. It does have a lot of a roasted malty uh, aroma in there. I am getting a little bit of a dark fruit, kind of raisiny aroma. Let's go ahead and pour it. Coming out pretty dark. I can see through it a little bit through the pour. I'm going to tip that up a little bit and just let her rip so we can get a little bit more of a head going. A little bit more of a head kick in here. I'm thinking this is about the apex of the head. It is about one finger. It is a little bit darker uh, than tan. It's not quite, um, yeah, you know, I'd say it's probably right around tan. It's not super dark. It's not super light. It's not quite coffee colored head. It's not a chocolate colored head. It is, I would say it's probably tan. The bubbles, there's not a, again, there was only about one finger of head, so there's not a whole lot to work with, but it's hanging around pretty well. If we hold it up to the light here, that is very dark. To me, it looks pretty much black. Uh, to you, it probably looks just about the same. I do not see through it. I am not seeing any shadow. I am not seeing any detail through the glass. So let's put a better nose on the glass here. It has a really dark, rich chocolate aroma. It has that roasted malty aroma. I am picking up on, the again, the dark fruit, kind of the raisin. It's not really much different than what I was getting out of the can, but sometimes with a bigger surface area, you can get different aromas. Sometimes I get totally different aromas than I get out of the can. Sometimes I don't get anything out of the can. So go ahead and try this one out. Cheers. That mouthfeel. Pretty, uh, pretty medium to heavy. Uh, it's not quite syrupy but it, it does have a bit of a thickness to it. It's, it's, it's got a substantial kind of um, mouthfeel. It's not super light, it's not even medium. It is quite a bit heavier than that, but it's not, it's not yet syrupy. So let's talk about the flavors because there's a lot going on here that I was picking up. So what I'm getting first off is I'm getting a sweet kind of chocolatey uh, flavor at first. A little bit of a dark fruit, a little bit of that kind of raisiny uh, flavor, but then maybe um, maybe almost like something like a pomegranate a little bit, uh, but then it really moves into that roasted, smoky, malty flavor. After that, you're getting a really bitter, fudgy, dark chocolate. It's very, it's got a really just nice chocolatey flavor to it, really rich. 
Um, it's not, it's got a bit of a creaminess going on there too in the mouthfeel department. So it's, it kind of goes from being sweet and then a little bit smoky and then sweet again with that chocolate and then a little bit of that dark chocolate here. So you're getting a, diff a couple different kinds of chocolate in there. You're getting, um, you're getting a bit of a sweet chocolate, but you're also getting like a cocoa, really powdery, dark, uh, chocolatey flavor at the finish there. It starts out very sweet. Uh, it almost, like I said, has that dark fruit kind of flavor. It has that chocolatey flavor to it. It rounds out and then it becomes almost like, you get almost this dark kind of cola flavor too um, that also hits on that chocolate and then you're getting that really dark cocoa. There is, um, there's another flavor in there that I was thinking of when I was talking about it and now I've totally lost what that is. So on the, there, the light bulb, you can see the light bulb go off. Like once you get to that dark chocolate, it almost has a bit of a coffee kind of finish to it. So you get that really dark, roasty, fudgy, rich, chocolatey finish, but then you also get that, um, like I said, you're getting almost a coffee flavor in there and it's almost like a sweeter coffee. So it's not quite the roasted bean kind of, you know, uh, coffee bean kind of harsh, coffee flavor, but it just has like almost like a sweetened coffee flavor to it. I'm taking little sips here because I know this is 11%, but it plays tricks on your mind because this does not have a boozy 11% kind of flavor to it. There's no boozy burn. Uh, over the past couple of years, I've obviously reviewed tons and tons of really heavy stouts and barrel aged stuff. And you can tell I mean, I've had over the years several beers that are 11% that taste super boozy, and you can taste the booziness like right out of the gate. This doesn't have that. It is super smooth. It has a lot of really great flavors that are really enticing and make you want to drink more and have another drink and have another drink, you know? So like I said, 11%, that can be very dangerous because this, you can tell it's a heavier stout. It doesn't have necessarily all of those kind of Russian Imperial Stout kind of vibes that I usually associate with Russian Imperial Stout. Sometimes I feel like there's a little bit more of like a clovey kind of flavor to Russian Imperials. I could be wrong on that, but that's something I sometimes pick up on Russian Imperials. This one doesn't have that, but it is, you know, it has a really nice creamy, thicker mouthfeel. It has a lot of great chocolate notes. It has that coffee note in there. It has the dark fruit. It has that sweetness. It has that, that chocolatey bitterness as well. Really deep down, very rich and fudgy. And it doesn't, but it, again, at 11%, it doesn't have that booziness, which is really kind of refreshing. And it's been kind of, you know, I've, I've had a few lately that have been that high ABV that aren't boozy at all. So it's, it's a nice kind of change of pace to get something that's that high ABV, but you don't really, you know, it, it's not hitting you in the face, like all about the head and neck area with that super booziness. So I have to admit, I've never had a plead the fifth before. This is the first time I'm having it. This is my first reaction to having it. Makes me wish I hadn't missed it for all those years because it was something that I always heard of, but something I just was never able to find or pick up at the time. But I would say if you're a, uh, you know, I, I don't know how past years have been, but I think this year is pretty quality. Again, the, this is the first time I've had it. So if you've had it before in years past, have you had the same kind of reaction to it? Let me know in the comments down below. But I think this is a really, you know, a continuing nice kind of um, Russian Imperial Stout, another, you know, quality dark horse beer they've had some kind of rough times they've had some good times so it's it's nice to see them coming a little bit back to form and i think that if you have liked plead the fifth in the past i'm sure that you'll probably like this one too all right friends that has been plead the fifth russian imperial stout from dark horse brewery have you had this year's what was your first russian imperial stout do you have a favorite let me know in the comments down below while you're down there if you like beer you might want to subscribe and click that bell i'm here talking about beer twice a week tuesdays and thursdays is all for free for viewers just like you and you never know, you might miss your newest favorite, or maybe you're, you, you won't be able to avoid a dud because you didn't watch and you weren't subscribed and getting notifications from this channel. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries. These guys are in Marshall, Michigan. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself a little Draft Therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Cheers.